I'm 46, a father of a teen son, Adam. His mother and I have been separated since he was a kid. Adam is always happy to spend time at my place as part of the custody agreement. He hates his stepdad, 30s, and calls him controlling. He puts strict rules upon Adam and punishes him for long periods of time over small mistakes. He doesn't give him an allowance like I do or let his mom give him any money. So Adam started working to be able to buy stuff he wants. Adam always wanted to buy an Xbox, but couldn't afford the full price. So I told him whatever he saved, I was willing to pay double, and he was able to buy a new Xbox for the first time weeks ago. I got an angry phone call from his stepdad asking why the heck I bought Adam an Xbox, knowing it's not allowed at his house. First of all, I told him Adam paid for the Xbox with his hard-earned money. And second of all, that's his mom's house, so he can't dictate what is and what is not allowed. He went on about how the Xbox is a distraction tool for Adam from his school and chores, but I assured him Adam is responsible with time and can manage and balance just fine. He suggested I keep the Xbox in my house and Adam can come over to play it, but I said that's not up to me. Clearly I got him angry, so he warned me about the consequences of seeing Adam playing with that Xbox and ignoring his duties. I hung up immediately. Two days later, Adam called me and was freaking out, saying his stepdad had a rage fit and threw his Xbox in the pool as a punishment for Adam playing with it instead of mowing the lawn. I was in dismay. I went over to his mom's house to see what was going on, but I didn't find her. I found Adam crying. I confronted his stepdad and he said he had to do this because Adam was being neglectful with his chores and said this was the result of built up resentment because of Adam's continuous lack of responsibility. I argued that even if he thought Adam was being responsible with his playing time, throwing the Xbox in the pool was unhinged of him because he could have hidden it for all I know. He yelled that he gets to decide what punishment fits and went on about how he was just trying to help Adam become a responsible young man. I was tired of this. I told Adam to pack his stuff to go to my place. His stepdad firmly said he won't allow it and that I was preventing him from performing his duties as a father and an authority figure, but I told him he needed to pay for a new Xbox. He argued that I was delusional to expect him to pay for something he doesn't want in his house in the first place, but I said that was enough and left. Adam's mother came and argued with me, saying her husband made a mistake, but I shouldn't have taken Adam out of the house. I asked if she's happy with how his stepdad is treating him, and she said that it's tough love, but he wouldn't have done this if he didn't care. I blatantly said her husband was just being an overbearing, power-tripping control freak and told her Adam is staying with me and we're expecting a new Xbox. She told the family I was stopping her from seeing Adam. That man is crazy. Get the custody agreement changed and take your ex's husband to small claims if he doesn't pay up. I would also go to the police and report the damages done to the Xbox so you have a paper trail. Protect your son. You are not the idiot. If Adam wants to live with you, OP, he's old enough to decide that. Your ex is not putting his best interest first. What she calls tough love is actually mistreatment. If she loves her son so much, she would want him away from someone that is throwing electronics in the pool in a fit of anger. That sounds like a person who is on his way to becoming violent with your son, if he hasn't already. If I were you, I would sit Adam down and have a serious conversation with him about his stepdad's behavior. I wouldn't be surprised if his mom has guilted him into not telling you things his stepdad has done. He can't break something he didn't buy. It's not his property. That stepdad is clearly abusive and your son shouldn't be around him. Who does he think he is? He doesn't like Adam at all. He's hiding behind the I want him to succeed and do well facade. I've seen this a hundred times. Oh, and he wants to rant about responsibility? Let him rant to the police and to your lawyer. He can't get away with destroying someone else's stuff just because he doesn't want them to have it. OP, I would suggest you check with Adam on what he wants to do. And then, depending on his answer, take his mother to court. The fact that his stepdad warned you that something might happen to his Xbox sounds to me that he was planning something from the beginning and he took the first opportunity to destroy the console. Throwing it in the pool seems like an extreme reaction to him not mowing the lawn. 
I, 29 female, have a set of twin daughters. Their biological father ghosted us in 2012. He sends his child support payment and shows up for court, but nothing more. In 2014, I met my current husband, and we married in 2016. I have never kept my children from their biological father. I tried to make sure he'd have a relationship with them, but he never wanted it. I can understand that we were both way too young for that kind of responsibility, and maybe he just couldn't handle it. However, he never gave me any sort of excuse or explanation, so that is what I'm going with. Anyway, last weekend, we all had to go to town for some errands. The girls needed new shoes and have a school project due next week. Of course, I had my own stuff to do, and so did my husband, so it just became a family outing. The girls saw something they wanted and called for my husband to see if they could get it. They've been calling him dad for quite a while now, and I thought nothing of it. However, my ex happened to also be in the store with his girlfriend and heard them calling my husband dad. Now he's absolutely furious about it. He is trying to guilt my daughters and me about it because, quote, he is their real father. I have no idea why he even cares. He ghosted us. Even his girlfriend didn't know he had children and was very upset that she hadn't been informed of their existence. I have no idea what to do in this situation. My girls don't want anything to do with him. He's making it out like I've kept him away from them in front of his girlfriend. Also, he's acting like it's entirely my fault that the girls don't want to see him. However, he hasn't made any actual moves to see the girls or even get to know them over the phone. He just calls to guilt trip me, then asks to talk to the girls for a minute before hanging up. How do I deal with this mess? Is he just trying to act like it's my fault for his girlfriend or something? I don't think he has any intention of actually being a father to them. My biological father hated that I called my mom's second husband dad, and yet only one of them helped me with my homework, gave me advice, took me on vacation, and listened to my thoughts. Your girls know what's up. The ex did this to himself, and now he's mad that he doesn't get all of the perks of fatherhood, even though he skipped the responsibilities. His loss, he can't have it both ways. You don't deal with it. You don't owe him anything. You don't even need to speak to him. If he calls, hand the phone to the girls if they want to talk. If not, say have a nice day or night and hang up. He made his bed. He can now lie in it. Your husband seems to be a good man who took on two girls. He didn't have to take on as his own. So in my opinion, it's him that deserves the title of dad. Stay strong, mama. I know you're probably just trying to be the bigger person, but don't. Your girls are old enough to see the reality of the situation. And if they want a relationship with him now or in the future, that is up to them and they can initiate. I, male 34, come from a highly dysfunctional family. I didn't realize that when I was younger. I had three other siblings, biological and half. My dad, RIP, was not a good man. He got married right after my mom died and had my two half brothers. My stepmother and I don't have the best relationship. Heck, I haven't even seen her since I graduated high school and only saw her seven years ago at my father's funeral. My dad was mad at me for leaving home and not acting like a family member when he ignored my brother and spoiled his younger boys. I was about to leave town, but my stepmom then called to invite me along with my older bio brother to attend my father's will hearing. We attended and the whole family was there including my younger half-brothers, who didn't even say condolences. My stepmom decided to do the will reading, and a lawyer was present. To my stepmom, the house and all of my father's personal possessions. To my older half-brother, Eric, my father's summer home, my father's classic car. To my youngest half-brother, Morgan, $250,000 and the mechanic shop. To my biological older brother, James and I, dad's golf clubs, his old camera, cookbooks, and a few shelves to keep them. James and I were stunned. James went hysterical, yelling, saying someone had tampered with the will. I replied that no, it's just dad being a narcissist idiot, punishing us for not playing family. James and I struggled a lot with finances for years, while our two half-siblings got luxury and sources of income. I stayed low contact for years. I have decent aunts and uncles, but kept hearing about Eric's disease. I heard he lost the summer house and was struggling with money for medical bills. My uncle called recently, 
saying Eric is very sick and I needed to attend a family meeting to put money together for his surgery and an assist device. I asked why doesn't his brother pay? And he said he refused to pay till all brothers contributed equally, which is fair. I asked how that was fair when James and I received nothing compared to my half siblings. He said my problem is with dad, not them. I found out the device is worth over $100,000. I told them I was not attending and wouldn't help with anything. My dad's family got involved, saying Eric is suffering and he lost most of his belongings and I should help. James agreed to help, but I refused, which made me feel more pressured. They told me Morgan wouldn't pay until all brothers contribute equally and that by saying no, I was ruining it. Not the idiot. It sounds like Morgan is trying to guilt and shame everyone to pay for his brother's treatment. Why would you bear any responsibility to pay for the medical treatment? Are they paying your bills? Have they ever? Where were they when you needed help? Sure, it would be kind and selfless to do so, but they're not asking for kindness, but expecting your payment and applying undue pressure to get it. Not cool. Also, you are not a saint, but a human trying to support yourself in a tough world. Why should anyone but your immediate family expect you to support them financially? Also, I hate the response. Your issue is with dad. Well, when dad's will was unfair, did they ever think to maybe try to make it right by sharing anything from their inheritance with you? Or let me guess, they took the goods and ran. You are not the idiot, OP. Send the old cookbook to Morgan. That should help. He said, my problem is with dad, not them. I mean, what? Your dad, and assuming your stepmom, successfully drove and maintained a wedge between you and your half-brothers. Now your stepmom and half-brothers are facing the consequences of that. They only seem to care about you and play the family when it benefits them. If Morgan can pay, let him pay. There's no good reason he has to put these kind of stipulations on the money. Not the idiot. OMG, no, you're not an idiot for not contributing a single bent nickel to the fund for him. He got money and a business and all of that and doesn't have it any longer to pay for things? Boo-hoo! Tell everyone that until and unless you become a pro golfer with the clubs you inherited, they're getting exactly what they added to your life over the years. Nothing. It's shocking how they want people to be a family when they're in need and not the other way around. I work as a manager at a workplace. I am a senior chief of a department. I have a second in command, Mavis, 30 female, who basically does what I do, coordinates who's covering what on which day, and takes care of certain matters regarding our specific employees. Along with supervising this, I also do the budget work for our department and submit requests for new equipment and the like. Now, Mavis had a bully for a long time, throughout middle and high school. I'll call the bully Jen. Jen did some pretty bad stuff to Mavis. Pretty much a ton of the worst kind of high school pranks. She wrote Mavis's mom's number on the bathroom wall, offering intimate stuff. She stole from Mavis, belittled her, basically made her life awful. It was super traumatizing for Mavis, and she still talks about how she hated high school. Jen also ruined most high school milestones for Mavis. She told me about how she didn't go to prom because Jen threatened to spill a drink all over her, about how she never went to her senior trip, which is just a school trip where all the seniors go to a place and vacation. The catch is that friend groups go together and you have to be invited by a friend group that you'll stay with. Mavis was never invited because Jen convinced everyone to leave Mavis behind. So Mavis was the only senior in school that week. This is all horrible and I feel awful for Mavis. As a teen, you feel like your life ends at 18 and it must have felt wasted because of Jen. Now, obvious things are coming up. We lost one of our better employees due to retirement. This was a mentor to Mavis and a friend to me. So we need a replacement and we shortlist candidates. Jen is amongst them and Mavis did not initially realize who she is. Jen arrives for the interview and Mavis has a breakdown and walks out of the room. I ask her if she's okay and she wants to be left alone. So I go back in and ask Jen to explain Mavis's reaction. Jen explains everything. And after double checking with Mavis, she told the truth. She was apologetic and disgusted with herself. I carried on with the interview and she impressed me. She was dedicated, seemed very smart and definitely capable of doing the job. 
However, in my industry, we often have trials where someone joins the team to see how they do the job rather than just talking about how they would do it. Mavis and I watched Jen during this. I noticed Mavis had some tears in her eyes throughout it, but knew that she would be embarrassed if I mentioned it. Jen does the job excellently, and the rest of the team seems to love her. Generally, I leave the signing of contracts and paperwork to Mavis, but decided that I could handle it this time. Jen signs for us, and we have a welcoming party with the rest of the team. During the party, Mavis runs out, tears in her eyes. This time I check up on her, and she is sobbing on the floor. She screams at me, saying I knew what she did and that I shouldn't have hired her. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. One of the things to consider when hiring someone is how well they will fit into the team and work with the manager. And Jen obviously does not fit in with your team, so she's a bad hire. You knowingly hired someone who will cause and will continue intentionally or just by being there to cause emotional anguish to a current colleague. Who do you value more? Because they both will not be able to stay. Just don't be shocked when you lose Mavis. Seriously, you are the idiot. First, for being willing to traumatize an excellent employee. Expect Mavis to quit as soon as possible over this, and you'll be down a good employee again. So the net effect of hiring Jen was zero. You have demolished Mavis's morale and belief in you as a decent employer. Also, you are the idiot for hiring someone with definite character issues. Of course, she said she was remorseful when you called her on it. It's a job interview, but she's feeling super smug about this. I expect that Mavis will leave you and find another job where she doesn't have to worry about coming in contact with someone who ruined her school life. This stuff does not leave you when school ends, and Mavis is likely feeling like Jen has now ruined her adult life too. It doesn't matter that Mavis does not work with the team. She probably feels like there's a target on her back and she will no longer feel safe. Well done, idiot.